Hi there, welcome to IndyCar on, well, an appropriately stormy and miserable day, I guess. And the Supreme Court, of course, has just given its ruling, and guess what? Well, yeah, you guessed it. They say we can't have a referendum. Well, that wasn't a surprise for most of us. Um, I was surprised that they didn't fudge the issue and kick, it down the can, kick the can down the road a bit further and maybe drag this whole process out and then refuse later down the line. But at least it draws a line under it. We now know where we stand with uh, Westminster. We all knew that the Supreme Court was being lent on heavily by the British state. It is a British state institution after all. And um, really what, uh, what transpired today, and I listened very carefully through the lengthy and carefully worded speech made by uh, the leader of the judges panel, and basically what he's saying is that self-determination, which was one of the arguments made by the SNP as a reason for allowing an advisory referendum, was very quickly discounted by a major misrepresentation uh, by these judges of the rules for self-determination under the United Nations Charter. Now this um, goes back to a number of cases uh, which were cited by the SNP as supporting the case for self-determination. One of them was Quebec and the other being Kosovo, both of which uh, were supported basically. I mean, Kosovo was supported as a case of self-determination by the United Kingdom. But the judges here have conflated two things. They have muddied the waters by claiming that self-determination is only available to countries who are oppressed uh, or who do not have access uh, to government and to the powers of government in order to further their own aims for the economic, social and cultural development of their own country. This is nonsense, absolute rubbish. The, the issue here is um, the fact that the, the Supreme Court has ruled against self-determination on the basis of decolonization. Now, decolonization only applies to countries which have been colonized and occupied. And that is what they were referring to when they said that it related to a country which was oppressed and people were denied access to government. We know that's not the case. They know that's not the case here. And they also know that self-determination has nothing to do with that. Decolonization is one aspect of it only. But um, the right to self-determination exists across everybody. Everyone in the planet or on the planet has the right to self-determination. If you are in a small regional uh, area of some other country and you feel strongly that you want your region to become independent of that country, you have the right to self-determination. You can hold a referendum about it. You do not have to apply the domestic laws of the dominant state. And that is the key element here. The Supreme Court has misrepresented self-determination deliberately to make it look as though we can never escape. And also to make it seem as though we have access to the power of Westminster. But they very, very uh, deliberately emphasized repeatedly several times, I think three times, they said the sovereignty of the Westminster Parliament. Now the sovereignty of the Westminster the Parliament is the issue here. Westminster, the Parliament in Westminster is not sovereign in Scotland. It has not been sovereign for over 315 years. The sovereignty of the UK Parliament extends as far as the border. Then after that, the people of Scotland are sovereign. That is stated in our own founding documents. Those documents were not amended by the Act of Union, and nor were they destroyed by it, and nor was the country of Scotland extinguished during the Union because England forgot to do it. And basically, that has existed for 315 years. Scotland and England have a treaty of union which combines the parliaments together. Now, the judges would claim that that means that the people of Scotland do have access to government. The trouble is they only have slightly less than 10% uh, of an influence on that government. And so there is no way that the people of Scotland, no matter how many SNP or Green MPs they vote for, even if they got all 59 of them, could they ever outvote the English Parliament and its supposed sovereignty. So it actually doesn't matter really whether England has sovereignty or not here. They have overwhelming numbers in the Parliament and it's because the Parliaments are combined that we have this difficulty. 
Really, the only solution for this will be for all of the SNP's Westminster MPs to remove themselves from that chamber as a mark of protest against this, because if, if we remove our MPs from that particular parliament, then we no longer have access to government. And if we refuse to take part in government, and that has been done for many years by Sinn Féin in the Westminster Parliament, then we are basically saying that we repudiate the uh, sovereignty of Westminster over Scotland. And really what we're coming to now is the, the absolute point of the matter, is who is sovereign here? Is it the English Parliament or is it the people of Scotland themselves? Because our Parliament is not sovereign. Our Parliament is an extension of the Westminster Parliament and it operates within very tight restrictions laid down by that Parliament as evidenced by today's decision. The Holyrood Parliament is powerless to hold a referendum. We now know that. The SNP plan now will be to make uh, a general election, a de facto referendum, something which has never been done in the history of general elections and is fraught with difficulties. And even if we manage to get past the 51% necessary to prove that the people of Scotland do want independence by electing, say, all 59 MPs uh, as pro-independence party MPs, we still have not actually had a referendum on independence and that argument will be wheeled out again by the British state to say that you've won a general election, big deal, you've now got 10% of the seats in Westminster or whatever it is, you've got 59 seats, well done, you still don't get your independence. What are we going to do then? And all this time we are going to waste the next two years struggling along in a basically a declining and collapsing British economy which seems hell-bent on basically destroying itself through Brexit and through other far-right retrograde uh, policies which are preventing the very people that we need to come and work here to do the kind of jobs which the British people refuse to do, make the the whole issue of things like farming and manufacturing extremely difficult for anyone here. That's beside the fact that we're going to be suffering from years of recession, years of hyper austerity where people will lose their jobs in their millions. This country is going into a deep recession and it's going to continue in recession far longer than anyone else. Britain is the only Western economy which is contracted after COVID, the only single one. And it's all because of decisions made in the so-called uh, sovereign Westminster Parliament. I think we have to nail this issue of sovereignty one way or the other. We have the documents to prove that we are sovereign. We have the documents to prove that we have the right to self-determination already in place. The claim of right is not just simply a historical artifact. It's a statement of facts. It's a statement of the constitutional facts of Scotland's existence as a nation. And it still is a nation. So we can no longer characterise this as a union of equals. It plainly isn't. It's a hostile takeover. We have been basically absorbed into the greater English state and we are no longer living in a democracy. We are being denied the opportunity to vote on our own future by a government which we never elected in the first place in a country which is, you know, got a, a parliament 600 miles away from many of the people who live in Scotland. This can't stand. It mustn't stand. And if we were to give up the fight at this point and just say, oh, well, we'll wait another two years and we'll have a go at a general election. If that doesn't work, we'll wait another 10 years and we'll see if we can get a referendum. This is not good enough. It's not been good enough in the past. It's not good enough now. It's time this was decided. And if our politicians are not prepared to do it, then we need to elect some politicians who will do it. Much of the problem here is basically political cowardice, um, political legalese, the fact that everybody is trying to do everything according to the United Kingdom's legal system. The United Kingdom doesn't have a legal system. England has a legal system and Scotland has a legal system. The two do not mix. They're like oil and water. Our laws say that we are sovereign. Our laws say that we have the right to self-determination as a group of people, not a parliament. The Parliament of Holyrood is largely irrelevant to this. 
This is not about which parliament has power. This is about the people having power. As, as uh, Canon Kenyon Wright very famously said at one point, when the, the British government was saying, you know, we are the government and we say no, Kenyon came back and said, well, we are the people and we say yes. And that is the essence of democracy. When a government as far right as the one we have in London is starting to tell everybody what they may and may not do, you're no longer living in a democracy. A democracy is where the people make decisions and the government carries out their wishes, not the other way around. So I think if you're as angry as I am at the moment, then it's time you got yourself down to one of the ten major events that are going to happen in cities and towns across Scotland at 5.30pm this evening, and we'll run on until half past seven this evening as well. Now, I know the weather is absolutely dreadful, but what the hell, this is the big chance for us to get out on the streets and show how angry we are about the Supreme Court basically telling us that we are a colony, it's just not called the colony. We've been taken over by England. We are now just a region of Greater England with Westminster telling us what we can and cannot do. It can't happen. We must stop it from continuing to happen any longer and we need to do that in a democratic and peaceful way. The only way to do that is to make sure that we get a decision from an impartial court which is even more senior than the law lords that we've just listened to earlier today. They claim that the International Court of Justice would rule against us. Well, they would, wouldn't they? They would claim that. They would say that this self-determination doesn't apply to Scotland because we're not oppressed and we do have access to the powers of Parliament. Well, I would say that we are oppressed. We're constantly bombarded with daily propaganda uh, news channels, which we can't control. We have no control over our own media. We don't even control what goes out on the news, never mind anything else. Everything is controlled from London. This is as bad as being invaded by another country. We've been occupied for 315 years and we are suffering from Jockholm syndrome. We got to the point where we're so pally with our uh, conquerors that we now feel part of their master plan. We feel comfortable inside this gilded cage. But it's still not true. We are still sovereign. We have always been sovereign. We have always had the power to free ourselves from this situation. And yet we are messing around trying to play by the rules of the people who have basically tried to um, absorb us into their Greater England project, because that's what this is really. This is us being absorbed into this great British Empire, which is dead. And let's face it, it's getting more dead by the minute. So I guess you can sense that I'm a bit annoyed today, but I'm not surprised. And it gives me absolutely zero pleasure to say, I told you so. But I think we all said to the SNP, this is not going to work. So why did they bother doing it? Is it just to confirm what we already knew, that we are in fact um, subsumed and assimilated into some kind of board collective run from London? Or are we actually a nation of people with the right to self-determination? Well, the propagandists have spread their tentacles into the Supreme Court now, and the Supreme Court is now telling us that self-determination doesn't apply to Scotland. And Scotland's a sort of separate case. We're not really a part of some greater uh, country which has brought in draconian means to get us involved in their huge ploys. The fact of the matter is that the Act of Union was signed under duress with the threat of warfare and naval blockades over us. It was hardly a voluntary union. And I think once the International Court of Justice reads through the history of just how this union came into being, they will reject all claims from the Supreme Court or anybody else that we are in some kind of voluntary union. This is plainly a takeover and it's plainly a hostile takeover. We need to make our presence felt on the streets this evening, so please get along to your local demonstration. They are everywhere. They're in Edinburgh, Dundee, Aberdeen, uh, Inverness, Inverurie, uh, Loch Gilphead. They're everywhere. Hoy, in the borders, all over Scotland, all over the, the islands as well, up in uh, Skye, 
I think they're in Orkney as well, so everywhere, get along to your march tonight and make your own voice heard. This cannot be allowed to continue. Thank you very much for sticking with the programme. We had record views today. There are over 460 views of this live programme this morning. I think that just shows how important this is to the people of Scotland. Anyway, hopefully we'll see you this evening. If you're in Glasgow, uh, I'll be hopefully on the steps of the Royal Concert Hall at the top of uh, Buchanan. The street this evening around seven o'clock. So be there, bring your umbrellas and bring your flags and let's make our voices heard. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.